So we're going to look at one of the properties in physics, which explains why when any object is thrown up with a certain speed, it will return with the exact same speed at the same horizontal plane. So that's true. Neglecting air resistance, if you just took a any ball of some sort, threw it up in the air, catch it at exactly the same horizontal plane so that it rises and falls the exact same distance, then it will hit your palm of your hand with the exact same speed that it was released with. V1 in the y direction is the exact same magnitude, so absolute value, as V2 in the y direction. And so we're just isolating the y direction, just the that one component. The signs are opposite because velocity is a vector and these are in opposite directions, but the magnitude is the exact same. So for example, say you released a ball upwards with a velocity of nine meters per second, then you would be catching it with the exact same magnitude, so nine, but it's a different direction, so it would be negative. So you can see the magnitude of the velocity is the same. And this is also true for any other point along the path. So at this random point, the velocity going up is the same magnitude as the velocity going down, so long as it's at the same horizontal plane. And so maybe you can see we can do this everywhere along the path. The velocities at the same plane are equal. At the very top, another thing that's true is the velocity in the y direction at the top is always zero. And this is due to gravity. We know gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And if you imagine the velocity at a maximum when it's first released in the y direction, we're just looking at the y direction and it slows down. That's due to the deceleration of gravity to zero. And then in the downward portion, picks up some velocity in the y direction. As you can see, the magnitude of these arrows getting longer. And it reaches a maximum velocity at the point along the same horizontal plane, right here. So that arrow we would show actually going down. But it's really at this instant. For those who are interested, we can actually prove that the velocities are the same. So to do that, I'm now going to change these numbers to something a little simpler. Let's make this 9.8, same magnitude as gravity, and you'll see why in a minute. So we'll separate the upwards portion and the downwards portion into two separate phases, and we'll see how the final velocity in the y direction compares to the initial velocity in the y direction. So in phase one, we're given gravity and v1 positive 9.8. V2 at the top is zero. And let's find the time. Doing this, we can use the kinematics equation where A is gravity. Isolating for time, we have V2 minus V1 over A, which is gravity, so we'll write it as G. And so the time here would be zero minus 9.8 over gravity, which we'll use as negative 9.8, and you can see this would equal 1, so we'd have 1 second. Now let's use that in the second phase to prove that the initial velocity is the same. So using the same gravity, of course, we'd have v1 at the top would be 0. It's at rest in the y direction at the top, so we use 0. We're going to use the time we just found as 1 second. And we're going to prove that the final velocity in the y direction is the same magnitude as what we started with. So let's do that. So we use the same equation where A is gravity, G. V1 is 0 plus gravity times time, which is 1 second. And you can see we get negative 9.8, proving that the 
final velocity is the same magnitude as the initial velocity. And this was based on the fact that the time was the same. It should make sense to you that the time to travel up is the same as the time to travel down. That's just something we have to accept. Most important is the idea that at a horizontal plane along a parabolic motion, the y component of velocities are equal in magnitude. And sometimes we use that to solve different problems. So you just have to understand this fact to apply to your problem solving.